We are back. And before I get into the video with Dan Lin, I just wanted to say that I've had a relationship with Warner Brothers for a long time. I've worked on half a dozen movies, television shows. Warner Brothers gave me my first break in the film industry. So Warner Brothers has a special place in my heart. That being said, all of that was pre Warner Brothers Discovery merger. And let's talk about Dan Lin he is going to be taking over the reins of all the DC stuff for film and television. And I've got questions. First of all, Dan Lin recently was on a podcast and uh, uh, it kind of went viral where uh, he kind of was taking a shot at the Snyderverse, you know, uh, claiming that, it, you know, jokingly saying that bots helped propel the, the Snyder cut. Uh, because there was a report that came out that 15%, 15% of 100% were bots that were pushing uh, the Snyder Cut, which means 85% of that, which is a huge swath of fan base, okay, um, were real. So right away, like, I'm like, okay, my gut feeling was telling me that no matter who they brought on, they were going to do a soft reboot based on the properties that they still have of, if you want to call it the Snyderverse, you can, but I would say the existing characters, the actors that are already in, in the house, if you will. So my thinking was they're going to release Aquaman. That thing's probably going to hit a billion. The Flash, even though they've had problems, things are getting pushed. Shazam's being pushed. A lot of stuff's being pushed and reshuffled because they want to get it right. They want to get all the CGI right because there's been a backup in CGI uh, with all the different effects houses. They want to get everything perfect. Even James Wan had said that Aquaman's effects just aren't, aren't there yet. He had made a comment that he wasn't sure if it was going to be released on time prior to everything being shifted. They want to get this right. I want to see them get this right. If they're going to Im implement a 10-year plan, that's fine. But right away, you got a guy that's already pushing back against the stuff that came before, which you don't have to keep the Snyderverse alive. You can let everything die, the nightmare sequence, all that stuff can exist on its own. But Henry Cavill is a good Superman. Jason Momoa is a great Aquaman. Ezra Miller, good Flash. Hoping things get, you know, turned around for everything that went on with him. Gail Godot, or Gadot, however you want to say it. Great Wonder Woman. You know, and I'd, I'd love to see them uh, uh, bring back Cyborg. Um, because I think he needs a, a shot at his own film. Ray Fisher. So that being said, I'm already feeling like a little pushback from Dan Lin. Now, but what... What gets me about Dan Lin is before Christopher Nolan's movies were greenlit, he was a producer on Justice League Mortal. So they had a misfire, I think, with Brandon Routh and Brian Singer's film. So they were trying to come up with full Justice League. Dan Lin was a producer on Justice League Mortal, which was going to be directed by George Miller. So they had already cast everyone. And it wasn't a bad cast. They had Adam Brody. Now, remember, this was like right after Brian Singer's movie. They weren't going for what Zack Snyder was able to bring to the table, which was uh, uh, really strong, muscular characters that look more like the comic book characters. So they had Adrian Brody as Barry Allen, uh, uh, who might have made a good Barry Allen back in the day when it came out. They had DJ Contrana who was playing Superman, Clark Kent. Uh, Santiago Cabrera was going to play Aquaman. Uh, Army Hammer was cast as Bruce Wayne. Uh, Megan Gale was cast as Wonder Woman. Common was cast as uh, Green Lantern. None of these guys look like they actually hit the gym. That's, that's the thing that, that bothered me the most in retrospect. None of them looked like superheroes. They all looked like, like the guy that was going to play Aquaman looked like a barista that you'd run into at Starbucks. Just a skinny, the, and I think like emo music was really big when they were developing this movie. And like the way they were looking at guys wasn't like manly man guys, you know, um, you know, they, they had a cast photo. You had George Miller down here as the director. Army Hammer is back here. He was 
cast as Batman, like I said, here's your Aquaman who looks like he could be running a Starbucks, a uh, little skinny guy here, you know, yeah, and they, they just, none of them looked the part and the costumes uh, for the most part were kind of, I would say they, they were comic book accurate. Uh, especially the Flash, his looked like the best comic book accurate. Aquaman just looked awful. Wonder Woman was eh. Uh, Martian Manhunter, who knows how that would have turned out, uh, and Green Lantern as well. Superman, kind of the same, kind of Henry Cavill, but he's a very skinny guy, you know, no real muscles. Looks like he, even when he's posing, he's pushing his biceps up. And Army Hammer in this uh, looks more like a Batman Beyond kind of costume. From what I understand, and you know, I had a friend that worked on it uh, back in the day, and they shot it. They were going to shoot this thing in Australia, hence George Miller, uh, at Fox Sydney Studios. I had a friend that was working on it, and um, you know, they they were pretty far along. And then Christopher Nolan had his take and talked to Warner Brothers, and they went with that, and they literally pulled the plug on this. I think they spent somewhere in the range of fifteen to forty million dollars before they pulled the plug on this movie. The things that bother me when I look at, uh, here's some artwork. This is a rendering of Superman, like the art design of what his costume was going to look like. And it was like underwear. It just wasn't colored. Uh, this over the shoulder kind of thing. Uh, the S looked pretty much like a Christopher Reeve type S, but these kind of sneakers and boots, they didn't, they didn't kind of change color or anything. It's okay, but look how skinny this guy is. I mean, to me, it just, it just didn't work. Uh, Army Hammer's costume, a little odd looking uh, for Batman. Here's a, a, a picture. I guess this is uh, George Miller's, yeah, Justice League. That's what Wonder Woman looked like there. When you put this guy up against Henry Cavill, you just really believe that like Henry Cavill is Superman. <laughs> like, like, and when you look at Batman based on uh, the Dark Knight stuff, uh, and then you put, you put him up against this guy and it just, it just doesn't work. He sat around a table with George Miller and all of the other producers and they all looked at this costume of Superman and went, yeah, that's going to be awesome. And that is what worries me because this looks like CW level stuff. And this is what they were investing in back then before Christopher Nolan came in and just crushed it with his trilogy. And then they gave Snyder the shot to do the others. I st like, if you're going to have Dwayne, the rock Johnson as black Adam, you can't find a skinny emo Superman guy to go up against him. You have to have someone that at least in uh, stature and body size is someone like Henry Cavill. Uh, Alan Rick Rickerson, Richardson, I think is how you say his name. The, could be someone you could recast if you wanted to as Superman. The guy that was Jack Reacher. I, he's the only person that comes to mind that could play Superman would be the guy that played Jack Reacher, Alan Rick Richardson. Or I think that's how you say his name. But we almost had Army Hammer as Batman. Now, what kind of a shitstorm would that have been after the cannibalism stuff came out and, and he you know, raped people or put them in bondage and you know all the recordings that came out and how his career just went to... Imagine, I mean, we're all freaking out about Ezra Miller now, because he stole a couple of bottles of alcohol from some guy's house, you know, and I know he threw a chair at somebody. Most of these things happened when he was drunk, whatever. I get it. Um, and I'm not saying any of that stuff is, you know, good. It's all bad too, but not a rapist, you know, not a guy that sexually abused people. I mean, we all, and an army hammer that he probably would have signed a, a, a multiple picture deal if the film was successful. So he would have been our Batman for a long time. I don't, I just, you know, we dodged a bullet with that. We dodged the bullet with emo Aquaman. And we dodged a bullet with this guy uh, who was going to be Superman. And what we got were more comic book accurate depictions, whether it be the Dark Knight, Frank Miller, Batman with, uh, you know, 
having Ben Affleck in that role and that costume and how menacing he was, or, you know, Henry Cavill Superman or Jason Momoa's Aquaman or Gail Gadot, uh, 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 you know, Ray Fisher, Cyborg, everybody, they all looked just like the comic books. And that's my fear with this guy is one, he already kind of is poo-pooing on uh, uh, Zack Snyder's films, which is fine. It's okay if he wants to move forward in a different direction and do something different. But if this is what he thought was cool then, what I'm hoping is Dan Lin is really more of a producer. And what I mean by that is not a creative producer. I'm hoping, uh, and I still think James Gunn will end up being the Kevin Feige of the DC cinematic universe. Uh, I don't believe it's this guy. I believe he will be more in charge of production. And what I mean by that is making sure the bills are paid, making sure you know the crew is hired properly. He's going to be that kind of a producer uh, because he has put out good movies. The, the, you know, he's worked on movies like The Departed and, uh, uh, and, uh, and there, I just looked at his resume the other day. He's cranked out a bunch of really good films. Um, Lego movie, things like that. Um, so I think he's more of that guy but not the creative guy. James Gunn is their creative guy. And I think James Gunn will be heavy in the mix. So I think when they, when they brought in Dan, they're more bringing in Dan to guide everything, but I don't think he's a creative guy. I think he's all calculations, money, what's being spent, you know, that kind of thing, walking hallways, nodding at, at, you know, production designers, you know, okay, okay, okay. Cause if that's what the director likes with the, with the production designer, yeah, yeah. He just comes in. Yeah. Okay. I don't think he's going to put his, put too much of his finger in the batter. Uh, because if he's, if he, if he, again, if he thought this looked good and that this was going to be amazing, we were in for another shit storm. What do you guys think? Dan Lin, is he the guy? Or is he not the guy? Is he the guy to steer the ship, but stay out of the creative batter? We'll see. What do you guys think? Let's talk about it in the comment section. We'll see you on the next one.